In fields sparkling with new monsoon rain, rice farmer Bunchwai Somsuk and her neighbours scatter the fertiliser, which should ensure her a good yield. Thai rice is renowned for its quality, and much of the crop here in Supanburi, north of Bangkok, is exported, mainly to the Middle East and Africa. These rich alluvial soils make the central plains of Thailand one of the world's most productive rice growing areas. These fields can grow three crops a year, quite literally feeding the world. But to do that, they need a lot of fertilizer. And at current astronomical prices, the business of rice farming here is barely viable. Bun Chui showed me the notebook in which she keeps track of her debts. She still owes the equivalent of more than $500 from last year. And with global rice prices quite low and fertilizers still rising, she's even less likely to cover her costs after this year's harvest. So this is everything that you've spent. We followed Bun Chui to where she buys her chemicals. These have been an essential part of the so-called Green Revolution, which has brought spectacular improvements in food production to this region. But they do come at a cost, both to the environment and especially now to the farmers' meagre budgets. It's really expensive. Last April, we sold 16% nitrogen formula at 550 baht. But this year, we are selling it at three times that price. And costs may go even higher. Thailand imports more than 90% of the ingredients for its fertilizer, but the government has actually been keeping the price down below world levels, something manufacturers say can't go on much longer. Our government asked us to cooperate and help the farmers. Of course, we can stand for that for a certain period of time. They give us a ceiling price, which is set up seven, eight years ago. So, so are, you, are your members making a loss at the moment on all the fertilizer uh, they're selling? Some of, of our members that follow the law, shall I put it that way? They're, they're losing money. Losing money. There are rice farmers, though, who've made themselves less vulnerable to the soaring cost of fertilizer. Udong Kwam Wongsa lives in one of Thailand's least fertile regions in the northeast. Making a living here is even harder than in the central plains. But Udon has joined a German-funded project which helps farmers to reduce the use of fertilizer while still getting roughly the same crop yields. The instructor Montri is telling her and her neighbor Songkran how the war in Ukraine is driving up prices. He also reminds them what combination of chemicals is most suitable for their soil and how best to apply it. With this knowledge, she's already cut her fertilizer bills by close to half. Our beliefs about fertilizer used to be passed on to us. If we saw other farmers using a certain formula, we just followed them. I didn't know that their soils and mine were different, that we could not use the same formula. I used to believe that the more fertilizer I added, the more produce I would get, and the more beautiful and greener the rice would be. Thailand's farmers have got into the habit of using far more fertilizer than they really need. But they do still need plenty to produce the surpluses that make up a large portion of the world's rice exports. If they're to keep on growing this vital crop, either fertilizer prices must come down or rice will have to go up. And that's a worrying prospect for the many countries that depend on this staple. Jonathan Head, BBC News, Central Thailand.